in this lesson, we want to talk about testing for collinear points using determinants. So in our last lesson, we talked about how we could use determinants to calculate the area of a triangle given three vertices of the triangle. And really quickly, I just want to review the formula because we're going to use it here today. So the area is equal to, you have plus or minus this one half times the determinant of this guy. So you would label one of those kind of given points as x sub one, y sub one, another is x sub two, y sub two, and then the last one is x sub three, y sub three. We went through and proved that it didn't matter what got labeled as which, okay? Because we have this plus or minus here, so if the determinant becomes negative, okay, just multiply by negative one half. If it's positive, multiply by positive one half, and you're good to go. Now, what we didn't talk about in the last lesson specifically was what we do when this formula gives us a result of zero, meaning there's absolutely no area. Well, it turns out that if you have these kind of three points that you're given, they're supposed to be vertices of a triangle, and you plug it into this formula and you get zero, those three points absolutely lie on the same line, right? So those three points are collinear. Again, they lie on the same line. So we can kind of simplify this formula and say that, okay, if this part right here evaluates to zero, then we know those three points that you gave us are collinear. So let's go ahead and use this real quick and look at an example. So we're given these three points here. We just want to test for collinearity. We have four comma one, negative one comma negative two, and negative six comma negative five. So do they lie on the same line? So let's just say this is x sub one, y sub one. Let's say this is x sub two, y sub two. And let's say this is x sub three, y sub three. It does not matter which gets labeled as which. So let me go back up. I'll give you a chance to just copy this formula real quick. It's very easy to remember. The third column of this matrix is all ones, and everything else goes in order. So you have x sub one, y sub one, then you have x sub two, y sub two, and x sub three, y sub three. So the notation here, the sub one matches that you're in row one. The sub two matches that you're in row two. The sub three matches that you're in row three, right? So it's very easy to remember. So I'm just gonna plug into that. So I would have my x sub one, y sub one. So I would have a four and then a one. This third column's always a one, okay? So that's easy to remember. Then you'd have your x sub two, y sub two, so negative, negative one, and then negative two, and then this is always a one, and then your x sub three, y sub three, so negative six, and then negative five, and this is a one. So we need to find the value of this. If this is zero, those three points are on the same line, or we could say they are collinear. What's the quick way to find the determinant? Again, what we want to do is copy the first two columns. So four, negative one, and negative six. We have one, negative two, and negative five. And we want to multiply down, okay? So four times negative two times one would be negative eight. And then plus, we want to multiply down. One times one times negative six is negative six. And then we want to multiply down. One times negative one times negative five is going to give me positive five. So negative eight plus negative six is negative 14. Then plus five would be negative nine. Okay, so this is negative nine. That's the first part. Remember, you're going to subtract away. You're going to go up now. So negative six times negative two is 12 times one is still 12. Negative five times one times four would be negative 20. And then you would have one times negative one times one, which is going to be negative one, okay? So if I do 12 plus negative 20, that's negative eight, okay? And then negative eight plus negative one is negative nine. So you see that what you have here, remember you have minus a negative, so that's plus a positive. You have negative nine minus a negative nine. So this is really negative nine plus nine, which equals zero. So because this is zero, because those kind of three vertices that you were given, okay, that were supposed to represent a triangle, give you an area that's zero when you punch them into the formula, you know that those three points lie on the same line. They are collinear points. Let's look at another example. So now we have three comma seven, 5 comma 10 and 6 comma 6. So again, I'm just going to label these in order. X sub 1, Y sub 1. This is going to be X sub 2, Y sub 2. This is going to be X sub 3, Y sub 3. So again, just plug into the formula. So you already know this is going to be what? X sub 1, Y sub 1. So 3, 7, and then there's always a 1. Then X sub 2, Y sub 2, 5, 10, always a 1. X sub 3, Y sub 3, 6, 6, always a 1. Okay, copy the first two columns, 3, 5, and 6. 7, 10, and 6. We're going to multiply down. 3 times 10 times 1 is 30. Then plus 7 times 1 times 6 is 42. Then plus 1 times 5 times 6 is going to be 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. 60 plus 42 is going to give me 102. 
then minus. For this one, I'm going up. So 6 times 10 times 1 is 60. And then plus, we have 6 times 1 times 3, which is 18. And then plus, we have 1 times 5 times 7, which is 35. So we have 60 plus 18, which is 78, plus 35, which is 113. Okay, so it's 113. So at this point, we can stop. We don't even need to do this calculation. Even though the result will be negative 11, it's not zero. So these points are not collinear. All right, let's look at one more of these. I think it's a very easy concept and you just need a few practice problems. You basically have it down. This is a much better formula to use, much faster formula to use versus kind of using the distance formula that we talked about earlier in the course. So this is my x sub one, y sub one. Again, I'm just going in order. This is my x sub two, y sub two. This is my x sub three, y sub three. Okay, so just plug in. So again, I'm going to say I have negative 12 and negative four, x sub one, y sub one, and then a one. Then I'm gonna have my negative six, my zero, and my one. Again, x sub two, y sub two, and then a one. And then I'm gonna have six, eight, and one. Again, x sub three, y sub three, and then a one. So find the determinant of this. I'm gonna put negative 12, negative six, and six, copy the first column. And then I'm gonna copy the second column. So negative four, zero, and eight. And let me make this negative four over here a little better, make it line up a little better. So I'm gonna multiply down starting. So negative 12 times zero times one, there's a zero in there. So you know that's zero, forget about it. Then let me kind of move this down so it lines up. We're gonna have negative four times one times six. That's gonna be negative 24 then plus, you're gonna have one times negative six times eight, that's gonna be negative 48, okay? So negative 24 plus negative 48 is negative 72. So that's the first part. So let me change colors, it's negative 72, and then minus. We're gonna go up, six times zero times one is obviously zero. Eight times one times negative 12 is negative 96. And then one times negative six times negative four, we know that negative six times negative four would be 24, so plus 24. So what is negative 96 plus 24? Well, that gives us negative 72, okay? So again, if you have this minus a negative, okay? If you have minus a negative, it's plus a positive. So you have negative 72 plus 72, which is zero. So these three points lie on the same line. They are collinear.